we just know giving in whatever capacity is an act of worship this morning. Do you believe that? That's why we want to worship up here this morning because we're worshiping over this offering. It, it, like Joy said, it's not about it's not about money. It's not about amounts. It's about just worshiping God with your heart, just with with everything. We we want to give God everything that um, that is in our hearts this morning. So as we just worship this morning, we we are just going to pray for this right now. We're going to pray for every single need to be met by people in this place this morning. Jesus, you want to oversupply. You are the God of oversupply. That's what you do. You do exceedingly abundantly what we could ask, see, think, or imagine. God, you want our, our obedience. You want our hearts this morning. That is the key here. You want our hearts this morning, God. You want our hearts of surrender towards you, Jesus, towards you. And so, Father, I just thank you that this morning you are expanding your work. You are expanding your kingdom. I believe right now for each person, for each person here, that you are expanding what you are doing in their lives. You're expanding giftings. Yes, You're ex increasing what what they are in need of this morning. And Father, we just, we speak to breakthrough in things yes. that they've been praying and believing for. We speak breakthrough into those things this morning. Yes. God, we trust you. We trust you. It's Jesus. Slide up then, please. Uh, the one behind, the one before it. We want to look this morning just briefly at a vessel of honor. A vessel of honor. That's who you should be. That's who you should desire to be. In the service of the Lord is to be a vessel of honor. And it's amazing because in this world right now that we're living in, there are 8 billion people alive on planet Earth, 8 billion, and counting, and rising. And I would, I would guess that the majority of them today, especially considering the world conditions that we're all living in today, no matter what, uh, what, what continent, country, whatever city, wherever we happen to be, I believe that the majority of people alive today are living a life feeling unworthy, feeling defeated, feeling of no value, and feeling of no purpose. That's probably the majority of people, no matter how good of an act they may put on. Some people can look really professional and successful, but inside they're crying. 
inside they're dying. And if only they would come to realize that each and every one of those 8 billion people were created by God. Amen. So many people today, they don't even believe in a God. Or they think, well, maybe he's just some far-off force, an impersonal force. And yet God created each and every one of them, all 8 billion of them, with a divine purpose. He created them with a divine love for each one. And they have not come to understand that as you and I do here today, sitting here this morning. We know the love of God, hallelujah. We know the purpose and the divine calling and, 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 and how God has formed us with a divine uh, purpose and plan to serve him. We are called to be this morning vessels of honor. Vessels of honor. We may think, well, that's certainly not me. <laughs> You don't know my life. You don't know my background. You don't know my past week. No, I don't know it, but God knows it. You don't know mine either. But we're called to be vessels of honor. Hallelujah. And that's what I really felt the Lord put upon my heart this morning. I want to show you right off the beginning. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, look at what it says. God said, let us make man in our image. So there's your honor right there. We are made in the image of God. According to our likeness, verse 27, so God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. And then after God was done creating man, and then woman, he stepped back and he said this, he said, it is very good. So husbands, when you look at your wives in the morning, you're going to say, you look very good. And why aren't you going to say the same thing about your husbands when they're all sweaty and smelly and dirty or not shaved? <laughs> Sweetheart, you look very good. Well, how can you say that? Because God said it. You look very good. <laughs> and so I want you to see how both David and Job, both of them, asked the very same question to God. Look at it on, uh, on the screen. Job 7, verse 17. What is man? Can you imagine? God, David is praying this. What is man? That you magnify him. That you set your heart on him. That was Job. And then David said the very same thing as Job did. He prayed, Lord, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? They both asked the very same question that sometimes you and I ask as well. God, why do you even care about me? Lord, why would you even think of me? Why would you even bless me, right? Lord, why would you even bother with me? And the answer to that question is so simple. Number one, he loves you as a father loves their own imperfect, sometimes rebellious, sometimes disobedient, sometimes talking back children. The father and the mother continue to love their children no matter what. God continues to love us no matter what. Hallelujah. We see that in Psalm 139. David writes this, he says, you are the one, referring to God, you are the one who put me together inside my mother's womb, and I praise you because of the wonderful way you created me. Everything you do is marvelous. Of this I have no doubt. Nothing about me is hidden from you. I was secretly woven together out of human sight, but with your own eyes you saw my body being formed, even before I was born. You had written in your book everything about me. And then, David, I love this, I love this, I love this. Every time I read this particular passage of Scripture, it just begins to stir my heart for God. David says, How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. Don't get this idea of some God up there full of wrath and anger just waiting to destroy you, waiting for you to mess up so that he can condemn you and, and do away with you. No, David says, how precious, how precious also are your thoughts to me, O God, to me. How great is the sum of them? Verse 18, if I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand when I awake and I am still with you. So number one reason why God cares about us, why God uh, promotes us, why God blesses us the way that he does is because he loves us, period. The second reason that God um, sees us, that God cares about us, is because he has a purpose and a plan for your life, 
And God is faithful to bring that purpose to pass, church. He is faithful to bring that purpose to, uh, to pass. No matter how many times you and I fail, it says very clearly in Philippians 1 and verse 6, it says that we are to be confident of this very thing, that God, who has called us, he will complete the work. He will perform the work until the day of Jesus Christ. And so doesn't that take a lot of pressure off of you right now, knowing that God has promised that the work that he's begun in you, the plan and purpose and destiny that God specifically called for each one of you individually. Amen. Because there's 8 billion people in this world and every one of them is unique. Even identical twins. There's something unique about them. There's some difference about them because God created them that way. Hallelujah. Amen. And so that tells me we're pretty special to God. How unique we are. There's only one of us. And some of you are thinking, thank God. <laughs> there's only one of you. <laughs> but that's how special we are to the Lord. And that's exactly what God promised. He said that he's He's going to fulfill it. He's going to bring to pass the work that he has begun in your life. Praise God for that. Look at Jeremiah 18, 1 to 6. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. And I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, the potter, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel. Notice what it says, as it seemed good to the potter. Do you see that? As it seemed good to the potter to make. No one else, not, not you, not anyone else, as it seemed good to the potter. This was his plan, this was his idea, this was his creation, and he was going to do it the way that he desired to do it. Not anybody else's you know, opinion or plans. I love that, as it seemed good to the potter. Verse 5, then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, you know, I think when I read that, I think God is saying, O, oh, you know, frontline church, can I not do with you according to my desire, according to my will, according to my plan? By the way, Freedom Lake Church, frontline church now, by the way, this is my church. It's not yours. It's not the boards. It's not the pastors. It's not the congregation. It's not the leaders. It's not anybody. This is my church. And Jesus said in Matthew 16 and verse 18, I am going to build my church. Right? And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That is the confidence that we have this morning that no matter what horrible trials that we have gone through or still are going to go through in this world before Christ comes, Jesus says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That is God's promise. So when things look dark and bleak and defeated and impossible, remember that promise in Matthew 16 and verse 18. Jesus said, upon this rock, that's our testimony, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah for that. Verse 4, the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Verse 5, then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. I thank God we are in our potter's hand. And let him, you know, let him mold us, let him smash us, let him break us, let him do whatever... He has to do in order to create the vessel of honor that God has already, you know, desired and dreamt for you and I here today. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to tell you this morning that God, by the way, is for you. He's not against you. Amen. God is for you. He's not against you. Praise God for that. God makes all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and what? And to those who are called according to your purpose. No, his purpose. He makes all things work together. Well, that's not just some unconditional promise. That is conditional to those who love the Lord and to those who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. It's his purpose. It's his church. It's his will. It's his destiny for our lives. The vessel that he is creating us to be in 2024 is a church that are called to glorify his holy name. Isaiah 64, verse 8, look what it says. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. In 
there it is. We are the clay. We are the clay. You're the potter. And we are all the work of your hands. Isaiah says it right. God, you're the potter. I'm the clay. According to the work of your hands. According to your design. According to your eternal plan and purpose for my life, for my family, for my church, for the world. That's what the Lord. That's what. That's what the Lord is saying to us here this morning. That He is the Creator, and we are what? We're the creation. He's the Potter, and we are the clay. My wife makes these beautiful outdoor wood uh, welcome signs, and she's been doing it for about a year and a half, and uh, she's made a lot of beautiful signs. A lot of people have just commented on how much they really love them and appreciate them. And you know, right from day one, when she first started doing it, you know, she would go down to the lumber store and pick out pick out the lumber, and then she'd bring it home, and she'd get me to cut it up. And then she would go through the long, strenuous process of creating this rough, old piece of wood into a beautiful creation. It took a lot of work. You had to sand it. Then you had to decide, you know, am I going to paint it, or am I going to stain it? What color am I going to paint it? What color am I going to stain it? You know, and then putting the polyurethane on, the, on, on it as well, and then deciding... You know, uh, what am I going to put on there? It's going to be a welcome sign. It's going to be a belief sign. It's going to be a Christmas sign. It's going to be a spring sign, whatever it might happen to be. And then, after that's all done, then she has to determine what font she's going to use because there's all kinds of different fonts for different words and letters. So it's quite a process from beginning to end. And all I can tell you is this, that from the very first sign she made, I never once heard that board of wood. Say, no, no, I want to be taller. No, Julie, I want to be shorter. No, Julie, I don't like that color, Julie. I, I, I want to be green. I don't want to be white. No, Julie, I don't like that font. It, it doesn't really suit me. I prefer a bolder font. No, Julie, I don't want that polyurethane over me. No, I, I don't like it. It's all sticky. And, and I know it's, I, I'm being kind of silly here, but I'm getting a point across to you here today. And that is because my wife is the creator of those signs, she gets to call the shots. She gets to determine what her plan is for that board. Perfectly. That's, that's her call. Every now and then I'll offer an opinion. Well, she, sometimes she'll listen. <laughs> but it's not my opinion to give. <laughs> you know, it's, it's her board. It's her creation. God is the same way with you and me. You know, sometimes we argue with God. We you know, we, we put our foot down with God, no, Lord, no, Lord, anything else, Lord, no, not now, God, no, not that, God, no, not, not that person, God, no, not that city, God, right, no, not that job, God, no, not that husband, God, and, and you know, like, we can really sometimes become so, you know, stubborn, stubborn against God, and the Lord is saying, I am making you a vessel of honor, don't you want to be a vessel of honor? Do you want to continue to resist my will for your life? Do you want to continue to, to just, you know, say no when I'm trying to get you to say yes? Because do you, do you not think that I have good plans for you? We read that all the time, don't we, in Jeremiah 29, 11, Right? The thoughts that God has for us. They're, they're plans for our, our future, for, for a, a, a hope, right? For a hope that God is going to bless us, that God is going to uh, raise us up to be a powerful, powerful man and woman of God in this world today. That's my desire. That has been my desire ever since the day I got saved, many, many years ago. The very first day I got saved, I knew God was calling me into the ministry. He put that hunger, that desire, that passion, and that fire into my heart for what God was working in my life. And believe me, it's not an easy thing. It's really not. It's not an easy thing. Sometimes it's very painful. Sometimes it's very discouraging. Sometimes it feels like you're going backwards instead of forwards. Sometimes it feels like God has forgotten you. Sometimes it feels like God has abandoned you. Sometimes it feels like people are against you. You go through all of those experiences that are real. They're real. And all you want to do is, you know, be a, a vessel of honor. All you want to do is be a man of God and please God. And when God says, yes, now I'm going to take you because why? I'm the potter. You are now the clay. I've got you on my wheel, and I'm going to make you the way I have designed you personally to be. So you know, you go around and around and around, and their fingers are all in there, and they're squeezing, and they're, you know, they're doing everything that they need to do in order to create 
what you were meant to be. And it's not always pleasant. And so our responsibility in becoming a vessel of honor is to simply listen to me, submit to God's will, and live uprightly for him. Is that complicated? It's maybe hard to carry out, but it's not complicated. Submit to God. You know, first of all, you need to know what God is calling you to do. And that, that whole, you know, understanding doesn't always come easy. Sometimes it's just, you know, a little bit of a vision here and there, and a little bit of a, you know, new revelation here and there, you know, a little voice from the Lord here and there, and a little scripture that here and there, and it begins to form more and more and more the vessel that God's calling you to be. But it's not always easy, and it's not certainly not overnight. It takes sometimes years and years for God to finally get you to be that vessel that he's wanted you to be. And we can't be discouraged through all of that. We can't give up through all of that. But our responsibility is to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I don't understand it, and I don't know how, but yes, Lord. And then to live uprightly before the Lord through the power of Christ and through the word of God as God reveals it to us. Hallelujah. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 on the screen, verses 20 to 21. In a wealthy home, there are some utensils that are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are used for everyday use. Verse 21, if you keep yourself pure, upright, right? If you keep yourself upright, keep yourself holy and righteous to Christ, you will be a vessel of honor. You will be. It's not something that you've got to strive to become. You're not the one that makes yourself into the, into the vessel. God's the one that's making you into that. But you've got to yield. You've got to yield. Come on, church. That is a really, really important word here this morning for this message. You've got to yield. And what does it mean to yield? It means to just give up and give in and get out of the way. Right? Just yield. Yield to the hand of God working in your life. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a vessel of honor. Your life will be clean. Hallelujah. Amen. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. A vessel of honor. Is that not your deep desire today for God to use you in an honorable way to bless others and to glorify him? That should be our desire every day. Every day, we should get up in the morning, we should pray that, Lord, today, I'm yours. I submit myself to you, God. Have your way in my life. Do whatever you want in my life. Prepare my heart, Lord. Prepare my spirit, Lord. Prepare my attitude, Lord. Prepare the words that I'm going to speak today. Prepare the thoughts that I'm going to have today. Prepare the people that I'm going to meet today so that I can glorify you as a vessel of honor and not a vessel of dishonor. There's too many vessels of dishonor today in the church. And God is raising up vessels of honor who know their place, they know their calling, they know their position, they know, you know their, their relationship with the Lord, and God can do amazing things in them and through them because of that. And then people will look at you and they will talk about you, but not in a bad way. <laughs> She's a woman of God. He's a, he's a man of God. Yeah, I almost said woman. <laughs> Sorry, Cliff. <laughs> you're a man. I know you're a man. <laughs> but but that's what but that's what we want. We want to have a reputation, you know, among people that know us. And it doesn't mean you even have to hear it. It doesn't mean they have even have to tell you. But you know that because of your life, because of the vessel that you are demonstrating, right, and exhibiting as an example, that people can think of you as a powerful man or a powerful woman of God. And that you're not going to quit, that you're not going to waver, that you're not going to give up, that you're not going to... It doesn't mean you're perfect. We're not even talking about that. Of course not. But we're talking about people that are stable, right? Stable, that are committed. Stable, that are real. Stable, that are there. Right? People that are people that are going to be there. People that are, uh, you know, they're, they're dependable. You know, they're genuine. They're who they are. They, they live the way they, they, they preach. Those are the things that we're talking about, what God requires of you and I to be a vessel unto honor. And how do we attain, how do we attain that kind of honor? There's only one condition. It's on the screen. Jesus said in John 12, 26, look at, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, 
there my servant will be also. Let me read that again. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. So that's talking about submission. And if anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. If we serve the Lord with all of our heart, if we say, Lord, here am I, if we, if we surrender, if we yield to God with all of our heart, Jesus says, your father is going to honor you. Period. Period. That's the condition. Do you want God to honor you? I want God to honor me. Absolutely. Not to become proud or arrogant or better than others. Absolutely not. I want God to honor me so that he will be honored. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, did you know that the, the Trinity, the Godhead, the three in one, dwells in you? Did you know that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, this is how much God is going to honor you. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Paul writes this. He says, we have this treasure in clay vessels so that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We're going to read that again, but we're going to insert a couple of words here, all right? We have this treasure, Christ, in clay vessels so that the excellency of the power, the Holy Spirit, may be of God, who is the Father and not of us. That is the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, dwelling in you this very moment. All three of the Godhead are in you this very moment. And the Word of God proves that. Look at Colossians 1.27. Look what it says. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Look at John 14.17. The Spirit of truth that dwells with you shall be in you. 1 John 4 verse 12. If we love one another, God dwells in us. These promises of the Trinity in us do not say... They don't, they don't say Christ with you. They don't say dwells with you, shall be with you. It doesn't say God dwells with us. No, it's in us. In us, church. As a church, God is in us. Hallelujah. That is the authority. That's the power. That's the blessing. That's the favor. That is everything. That's the honor that God bestows upon his people who simply believe him, who will obey him, will fear him, love him, honor him, serve him with all of their hearts. It's, it's right there in the Word of God. You walk in the authority of the Father. You walk in the resurrection life of Christ. You walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what makes you a vessel of honor. Now, I want you to think back to the same question just a short while ago at the beginning of this message that David asked in Psalm 8-4 on the screen. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? And David answers his own question the next verse. Verse 5. And yet, Lord, you have honored him like royalty, crowning him with glory and honor. God, you have, I don't, God, I understand why you even care about me, but God, you have honored me with royalty. Church, can you get that into your mind this morning? You know, it just, I don't want to sound like a broken record, you know, just repeating over and over again. But it's time that you and I begin to see ourselves the way that God sees us. God sees you and I as royalty this morning. Royalty. We are sons and daughters of God. We are princes and princesses of God. Of God. The King. That's how God sees you and I. And he honors us. He honors us as his sons and as his daughters. And we have given, been given such privilege by the King. In this world. This is our dominion, by the way. This world is the church's dominion, by the way. And I'm not talking about some false heresy. You know, and, and we'll get into that some other time. But God has given you and I the kingdom. We are living in the kingdom of God right here and now on this earth. There is a coming kingdom, but there is a present kingdom. You and I are royalty in this kingdom. Amen. By the way, by the way, royalty comes with authority. Think about that. Royalty comes with authority. Royalty comes with dominion. Royalty comes with privilege. Royalty comes with blessing. Royalty comes with open doors. Royalty comes with new things. You can go on and on and on. If we will only understand the real concept that we're not just poor, lousy, rotten, miserable sinners that we once were, but now we are royalty. Now we are sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. And he is raising up vessels of honor. 
you are a vessel of honor because God has poured his honor upon you and in you. That's the only reason why, church. Now, I just want to share quickly before I close here about this envelope that I hold in my hand. You're familiar with this envelope. This is a, an offering envelope. And um, this, uh, this particular envelope is worth two cents. Two cents. I figured it out. Because at Dollarama, they sell 75 for a buck and a half. So this envelope is worth two cents. It's pretty invaluable. In other words, you know, like if you lose it, who cares, right? Well, <laughs> let's, just, uh, let's just consider that for a moment. Because as inexpensive or as invaluable or as useless that envelope may seem to be, it comes with an amazing purpose, a very significant purpose. And that purpose is it contains something that is very valuable, something of wealth, right? Something of prosperity. It contains that within it. So that envelope, even though it's only a two-cent piece of paper with some printing on it, it it's, it's so much more than that. And that's really how God is using you and I as clay vessels. That's what we are. We're just cheap, you know, clay vessels that don't really amount to a whole lot. But because of what God is putting in that vessel, when God is finished with that vessel, when he's formed the vessel, when he's put it into the fire to, to harden it, when he's put the glaze and the color and the beauty on it, then what God is putting into that vessel, that vessel that used to be cheap, useless, you know, waste of clay, now it has become something beautiful and something wonderful because what has God put in it? God has put honor. God has put your, his honor into that vessel. So you're not just some empty crackpot here this morning. You are a vessel of honor. Hallelujah. And you are filled to overflowing with honor today, church. Don't let the devil try to talk you out of that to make you think that you're worthless, that you're, you're not really useful to God. No, you absolutely are. When you submit yourself to God and let him do his work, God will fill you to overflowing with honor. Hallelujah. Let's all stand together, shall we? Ask the worship team to come on up. We're going to sing that song that we sang earlier. This is my desire. This is my desire to honor you, Lord. This is my desire. And I pray this morning that as we sing this, that it won't just be a song, but let it be the prayer of your heart today. Because my friends, my friends, my friends, God wants to fill you with his honor this morning. He wants to fill you with the value of Christ. He wants to fill you, listen, with the riches of heaven. He wants to fill you with the expenses of your salvation. With the beautiful silver, gold, and precious jewels that God has formed, prepared, ready to be poured into your life today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God will not keep you in that fire one second longer than what you need to be. When God sees that you are finished, He's going to take you out, and he's going to use you in ways that you never could imagine. And you're going to go from a worthless hunk of clay into a beautiful vase, a beautiful vessel, a beautiful, a beautiful cup for the Lord to drink out of as he's filling you with his presence. You know what? I want that more than anything else. God, we want your presence, Lord. We want the manifest, beautiful presence of God. We want to have an encounter with the presence of almighty God who loved us and who gave himself for us so that our lives be turned around. God, we're no longer lost and dying and out there wandering around hopeless in a world of pain and suffering and darkness. But Lord, we are now walking as sons and daughters of the King in the kingdom of God with authority and power, with blessing and favor and riches and wealth. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, we receive that this morning. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to ask you this morning, if you want your life to be that vessel unto the Lord today, 
Don't become all frustrated about it. If you know that there's areas in your life that you struggle with, that you stumble over, let God mold you. Let God remake you. Let God remake you this morning. Let God reform you this morning. Let God make you into that beautiful shape that will be able to receive the glory and the power, the honor of God this morning. And if that's you today, we want to pray for you together today. And as we sing this song, I'm going to ask you to come on up to the front. And we're just going to spend some time in prayer today because this is a very pivotal time. This is a God-appointed time in your life. The Lord does not want you any longer from this day forward walking around hopeless without purpose. God says, no, I have given you purpose. I have given you hope. I have given you plans. I have given you a future. And I have given you a present. And the Lord says it begins now. And the Lord says, this is the hour that I want to refill you with my power, with my spirit, with my blessing and my favor upon your life, in you and through you, so that you can be a blessing to the people that I bring into your life. God says, walk as a, a man or a woman of honor. God says, walk as a man or a woman of honor. One that walks with dignity, one that walks with such confidence in me, the Lord says. Such confidence in my goodness, such confidence in my favor and blessing upon your life today. For my destiny is secure in you personally this morning. My destiny that I have brought about and planned for you before you were even brought into this world, while you are yet in your mother's womb, God says, I planned my destiny for your life. And the Lord says, and I will watch over that destiny to fulfill it. Yield your life to me, the Lord says, and watch and see the transformation that I will bring. For I will take you from a hump of clay and I will bring you to a beautiful vessel. And you will be useful in my hands, the Lord says. You will be useful. You'll be useful and valuable to me in my hands, the Lord says. Do not resist me. Do not deny me. Do not deny me, the Lord says. You do not belong to yourself. You belong to me. I created you for such a time as this. And the Lord says, I want you to be walking now in your time. This is your time, God is saying. It's no longer ahead. This is your time right now. This very present time. And God says, this is the time. I want you to make that decision. For I will not force you, I do not force my vessels, but I bring them to that place of desire. I bring them to that place of passion, where they want nothing more than to become the shape that I have ordained for them, the plan that I have purposed for them. And so the Lord says, come now. Come now, do not hesitate, come now. And you will see what I'm going to do in your life and through your life. Your desires that I've put there will be fulfilled. I will take you from cursing to blessing. I will take you from darkness to light. I will take you from loneliness to fulfillment. Fulfillment in me, the Lord says. But come now, in Jesus' mighty name, come now, come now, come now. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. 